Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll provide a brief overview on the cytochrome P450 enzymes and discuss the possible drug interactions associated with it and what to do about it. Please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It costs $0 and it takes less than 5 seconds. Thank you. The cytochrome P450 enzymes. Now these are enzymes that are normally found in the liver but can be present in many cells throughout the body. They play a huge role in metabolism of things that are foreign to the body. So in this case drugs and because of this function is known for detoxification. Now the original forms of drugs are usually not able to be cleared by the body so the body must find a way to fix this. It does this by converting it into a more familiar form so that it can be executed. It uses two methods. So you have phase one which is the oxidation or removing electrons from the compound so it becomes charged and more water soluble. And this is catalyzed by the SIP enzymes. Then you have phase two, which involves conjugation, which will further increase the compound's water solubility by attaching a group to it. So let's say we have a drug here and also the SIP enzyme here. Now try to visualize the drug or substrate binding to the SIP enzyme to form a complex. This would then release a more polar form of the drug. So drugs can affect the activity of the SIP enzymes. The effects can be characterized as strong, moderate, or weak. Now for the inducers, here are some examples of three strong inducers. So when the drug induces the SIP enzymes, it increases the production and activity of the enzymes, which will result in an increase in the drug metabolism for that specific drug that binds to the enzyme. Let's take a look below. Drug A is a SIP enzyme inducer. When you take this drug, it will act on the SIP enzymes, and specifically in this case, these are the SIP enzymes that normally break down drug B. And this will lead to an increase in enzyme production and activity, and more drug B will be metabolized. Next, we have the inhibitors. And here are three common strong inhibitors. So opposite of inducers, the inhibitors decrease the activity and production of the SIP enzymes, which will result in a decrease in drug metabolism. So once again, you have a drug that is a SIP enzyme inhibitor. So after taking it, it will reduce the production and activity of the enzymes, which will then lead to a decrease in drug metabolism. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please make sure to hit the like button. So drug A is metabolized by the CYP384 enzyme. And we have a patient who's on drug A and loves to drink grapefruit juice. So the mechanism is simple, right? Grapefruit juice is an inhibitor of CYP384. So in this case, it will decrease the metabolism of drug A and increase its levels. So based off this, what can we do about it? Now in clinical practice, depending on what drug it is, an increase in the levels can be detrimental. So we would completely avoid this interaction. So it will be a contraindication. Now for some drugs, you can reduce the dose and you can possibly counsel the patient to avoid grapefruit juice. So drug B is metabolized by CYP1A2. We have a patient who just purchased St. John's Worts over the counter. So in this case, the mechanism is that the patient is on drug B and the St. John's warts is a strong inducer. So in this case, it will increase the metabolism of drug B, which will lead to a decrease in its levels. Once again, depending on the drug interaction with that specific drug, depending on what drug that is, you may want to avoid the combination, right? So it will be a contraindication. You can counsel the patient once again to avoid taking that medication, the St. John's wart, and then also you can increase the dose of drug B as needed. So before I end this video, I wanted to apply what we learned to prodrugs. Now prodrugs are simply drugs that need to be activated first in order to actually work. And the SIP enzymes are sometimes the catalyst for this. When dealing with drug interactions, so if we have a patient on a prodrug and a SIP inducer, this will lead to more enzymes that will convert this prodrug into the active form. 
So same scenario, but the patient is on an inhibitor of the CYP enzyme. So this will lead to less enzymes that will convert the prodrug to its active form. And that will be all, folks. As always, make sure to show some love if you actually enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Take care.